Hello everyone, my name is Caroline Jensen, a Sony Artisan of Imagery and an instructor and mentor at Click Photo School. Today I'm working on a project for Instagram and our theme for this week is bokeh. Now I have this image of these tiny little purpley blue flowers that are, are in my front yard, which is somewhat of a miracle considering my entire yard is a mud mess uh, due to construction last year. But there were these, these sweet little tiny blossoms uh, poking through in the one small patch of grass around a tree and I thought that they were fun. And the thing that caught my eye about this image was the fact that there's this giant bokeh ball <laughs> right here, which almost reminded me of a moon and it was sort of fun. So I'm gonna edit this image today uh, for this project for Instagram and uh, you can join me. So the first thing I wanna do is take a peek at everything here. I like to hit the auto button just to see what it would do. And it actually works out fairly well. I like how it has adjusted things. Uh, I am working in the Lightroom CC mobile. Well, this is the desktop app, but this is the newer Lightroom CC, not to be confused with the older Lightroom CC, which is now Lightroom Classic CC. Uh, this is the more mobile friendly version. And the auto function, which uses the intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence, is actually quite brilliant. A lot of times it does exactly what I would do by hand, so I'd like to give it a peek. Uh, other than that, uh, this is looking pretty good. The focus is on uh, these few petals here and uh, the stamens coming out of the, of the flower here. It's more the whole scene that I'm interested in, but uh, there are a few things that I'm gonna wanna change with it and I think I'm going to do the majority of that over in Photoshop. So I'm going to take that over there, send to or edit in Photoshop. We're going to let it open up and I'll just pause this until it... All right, so I'm over here in Photoshop CC and the first thing that I want to do is just clean up some things in this image that I couldn't control when I was shooting. Uh, there's a, a bud right here, which is kind of in the way, I think it's ruining the composition. So I'm going to give this a go at getting rid of it. The first thing I'm gonna do is do Command J to duplicate the layer. And then I could go into my clone tool. And what I'm gonna be doing is just selecting this green area here using my option key and kind of going over the top of this area. Now it's probably gonna look relatively messy. I am not somebody who is a big huge fan of cloning. Uh, this isn't something that I specialize in or feel very particularly good at, uh, but I do use it when uh, I'm thinking creatively. Um, I'm just going to sort of go over the top and, and I'm just choosing different areas to more or less make this go away. Now as I get really close to this blossom here, I'm going to zoom in and grab this again and make it smaller. I'm just sort of making it disappear. Like I said, I'm not particularly advanced with this. Whoops, that I don't like right there. And I'm probably gonna end up doing a painterly sort of effect on this, so it really doesn't matter in the end. Um, I tend to like things that are a little bit more surreal. I'm just kind of, whoops, that I didn't want to do either. And I'm going to back it up and see how it looks. I'm zoomed in to 300%, so that's a lot farther than uh, I need to go probably. That's why it seems kind of pixely and a little bit noisy. It's because I'm, I'm zoomed in so far. And I'm going to get rid of that bit there. I'm Like I said, I'm not being terribly uh, precise about it. There's a lot going on in the bokeh areas here, so it's hard to tell. You know, there's a lot of layers happening. So then the next thing that I want to do is sort of clean up all of the, the, the noise and uh, variegations. You see a little bit of spotting here. It could be any number of things, so I'm just going to grab my healing tool or the spot healing brush and go over these little areas. Squiggle marks. Uh, there's invariably gonna be areas that have, um, you know, well, there's always little things happening. And up here, there was a little bit of a squiggle. Go through there. To just sort of clean that all up. Then, 
the next thing that I'm going to do is zoom back out. And, oops, let me make sure. I have some dust on my screen, so that was fine. Uh, I don't need to eliminate that. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go in here and do a Gaussian blur layer to just sort of soften the interior. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate it again and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and hit OK. I'm gonna add a layer mask invert that and then take my brush make sure that my mask is white and I'm just going to paint that on I'm not really trying to change anything a whole lot I'm just softening those those variegations that are happening in the bokeh area there's a little bit of chromatic aberration perhaps happening uh, just kind of blurring it out to soften it there's these weird edges here where the, they're transitioning and they kind of drew my eye away from the overall shape, which is what interested me. I'm not so interested in this being photorealistic as just highlighting the fact that it looks like a large moon behind this small little flower. All right, so now I'm going to create a stamped layer, which is Command Option Shift E, which stacks a brand new layer on top, which, is, which contains all of these edits that I've done already. And I'm going to go to Filter, Alien Skin, Exposure X3. All right, now that I'm in Exposure X3, I'm going to just make a couple quick adjustments over here before I bring it back to Photoshop. One of the filters that I absolutely love is called the Old Kodachrome Filter. And it's, it's very uh, moody and dark. And I'm going to add that one. It's called Kodachrome 35 Old. And I'm going to want to modify it a little bit. It has some features that I don't necessarily want on this image. So uh, number one, I've made an adjustment to the mask. So I'm going to reset the mask and invert that so you can see it again. Basically, I'm just setting it back to its original state had I uh, clicked it in the filter gallery. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom. And I want to turn off the overlay of texture because there are little dots that I don't necessarily want here. And I'm going to turn on light effect. I'm going to click on the light effect and go to sun flare. I'm going to go to the one that's sort of coming up from the side and flip that around by hitting this little angle here and then bringing the opacity way down. If I turn that off and on, it just brightens that edge. And I'm, I'm, you know what, I think I'm going to leave it off. A lot of times I like to enhance the light that's already there, but this one, it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to leave that off for now. Going back up to our main navigator panel where we have the preset applied, I'm going to go up to overall intensity and lower the opacity on this. This is without anything. And this is with it about halfway. And this is with it all the way. So I want to zoom in here to take a peek. If you can see, there's a bit of a halo effect that's happening. That's usually what happens when you overly modify a color. So I'm going to lower the opacity of the overall intensity until we don't notice that quite so much. I'm going to see how far I can push it before we start to get a big problem. All right, so it's not very far, so I'm going to kind of just crank it up and see what happens if I use the mask. They have a brush here, and I'm going to grab the brush tool, and really what that's going to do is just remove the, the, um, the uh, effect off of the image. So I'm going to take the opacity of the brush down to, oops, we want that up. That's the mask all the way. We want a, the brush opacity. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to try it at full effect here and see what happens. Right eraser. We're going to lower the flow, make sure the feather's really high, and just kind of go over the top of this. Maybe make it nice and big. Essentially, what I'm doing is just removing the effect from the flower. And the bigger I do it, uh, the, it r retains the moodiness in this area, but it, it lets the light kind of flow into this area. 
I'm back in Photoshop now and I've flattened the layers uh, so it's just it's like starting over and what I'm going to do is do a little bit of an oil paint uh, effect so I'm going to just command J it again which is duplicating the layer filter stylize oil paint and I use the the oil paint filter a lot at a lower opacity in order to hide things I don't like in the image. I like things very simple and smooth and this helps me reach that goal. So I really have all of the sliders over to the right with the uh, shine effect all the way over to the left. And when you zoom in at 100% you're going to see that it's very painterly which is a little bit more than I want on this image but you will notice that it does soften all of that variegation uh, that was in the bokeh areas uh, quite nicely. So I'm going to bring this down to about 50% is usually my go-to amount. What it does is it brings back enough of the, when I turn it off you can see there's more of the texture of the flower but when I turn it back on it smooths it out but it's still fairly sharp. I might zoom in right in here, put it at a mask on, grab my brush tool, make it a little bit smaller, make sure it's on black so I can remove the effect. And I'm going to remove it from the sharpest areas of the image so that it's nice and sharp on the areas where uh, the crispest, uh, crisp, <laughs> where, the, where the focus was the best. There we go. Reveal that. And that just gives kind of an ethereal, soft feel. It just, it, it's, it's almost like a, a Gaussian, a Gauss, I always say that wrong, Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur layer, but just a little different, it's just, just a little different. So then we're going to bring this back over into Lightroom. And the way we do that is by hitting save. And it, you see it's saving up here. And now it, it's tricky because you would think it would just bring it right back into Lightroom CC, but it doesn't. Uh, this was a previous version. Uh, in order to get it back, I have to close this and go back into Lightroom. And then it brings it back. The last thing that I'm going to do to edit this image is just do a little bit of highlighting and darkening or dodging and burning. What I'm going to do is grab my brush tool. And I'm going to reset all of the sliders so that they are at zero. And I'm going to move the dehaze slider to the left. This is, has a, a softening lightning effect. And then I'm going to lower the exposure quite a bit and have a pretty large brush and paint this on. And what the dehaze does is it sort of diffuses the darkness. It makes a, a very soft A, a very soft kind of vignette. It's it's a it's a beautiful hazy look, and you can always go in here and adjust the settings as you go. I love that about Lightroom. You can paint on the mask and you can do multiple things. And then really, I'm just highlighting this area right here, and maybe I'm going to warm up the 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 vignette as well. It's a little bit too gray and black for me. Then. Uh, I'm just, for kicks, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to grab another brush and I'm going to zero out my effects and over, uh, move clarity over, make the size of the brush smaller. And I just want to see what happens if I, if I up the clarity on this little moon area and also up the exposure. I'm trying to see if I can make it look more like a moon. If I want to see my mask, I can hit the O key. Oops, I've disengaged it here. There we go. And by hitting the Option key, I can turn it into an eraser. I don't want it to go outside of my mask. Add this in. And of course, this is way too much, so I can bring the exposure down a little bit but it gives that sort of glowing effect. It makes it a little bit more moody and dramatic. So really it's very similar to the way it was straight out of the camera. We just, with darkness and light and minimizing color and enhancing color, brought it to a place where it's a lot more moody. And I don't usually take this long to edit. This probably would take me about three to five minutes without talking, but I wanted to share my steps so you could see kind of what I do and my thought process behind making just a simple, 
picture of some little weeds that are on a tiny patch of grass uh, more interesting. All right, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.